the revenues than preserving cultural heritage. Because in 1959, the Chinese government flooded the valley that Xi Cheng sits in to make a new artificial lake. For what purpose? Well, they decided a new... Who do you think is going to be there at the house when well, we get there? I talked to, I haven't been home for Christmas in eight years. It's been because we're doing all these Christmas parties in our community. And one of my homeless friends came over to the house for a bite to eat. And I felt the cold coming. Hey guys, Wormy Horror here. The following five stories are true to the best of my knowledge and can be found on the subreddit Let's Not Meet. If you like the following stories, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, or subscribe, especially if you'd like to keep updated with the channel. Without further delay, here are five true creepy stories. Number one. So, seven years ago, I was pregnant with my daughter. My niece, 15 at the time, would come with me to the local mall so I could walk around in aimless circles, trying to induce labor. It was a rare, mild break in the weather, so we sat outside for a bit, enjoying the brief warmth before yet another snowstorm would pummel us. While sitting there, a guy walked over to us. He seemed a bit sketchy, probably a bit older than my 24 years. Hey there, he smiled, showing yellow, dirty teeth. I forced a polite smile, not really wanting to talk. He focused his attention on my niece. I'm Justin. Who are you? Reluctantly, she answered, I'm Ashlyn. Cool, cool. I'm 19. How old are you? Ash glanced over at me. I was trying not to pull a face, but come on, that guy was definitely older than 19. I'm 15, she answered. This went on for a while. Just short, polite answers. Finally, he started to get a bit weird, turning his attention to me. I took care to make sure that my wedding ring was highly visible, but he didn't take the hint. I finally tried to politely excuse us. Instead of leaving us alone, he proceeded to follow us inside. In order to get away from him, I tried to fake that I had to go to the bathroom and pull my niece in with me. What is this guy? She hissed. Thanks for having to pee. I responded that I didn't have to and that he just gave me the creeps, especially the whole a beautiful pregnant woman thing. I cringed just thinking about it. I suggested that we hang out in the bathroom for a little while more to make sure that he would be gone. We waited for about 10 minutes before venturing back out. Looking around, I was relieved that he was no longer in sight. We conferred real fast and decided that we would go on a walk as planned, just a few circuits around the mall. We were closing in on the bookstore with its tall floor to ceiling glass. That's when I caught him following us. He was being sure to stay just far enough behind that we wouldn't realize that he was there, but I caught his reflection. I nudged Ash and pointed towards the bookstore, hoping she could see the same reflection I did. Come on, let's go ahead and take a look. I know you hate books, but I want to see if they have anything new, I said. We ducked in. Thankfully for being short, it allowed us to disappear behind the low shelves. Again, we waited it out. We didn't see him around before continuing our trek. But yet again, I caught a glimpse of him not far behind us. I groaned under my breath. He's still there, I whispered to Ash. This time, she grabbed my arm and dragged me into Victoria's Secret. Oh yes, the perfect store for a woman who is nine months pregnant, I thought. This time, we decided to head back for the doors and get out of here. Neither of us were comfortable with this creep behind us. Before taking the exit, we looked around carefully, making sure he was actually gone. We didn't see him anywhere. We hurried to my car, and thank goodness for reserved pregnancy parking. The next night, I turned on the news. It was the usual, politics, some new bombing in the Middle East, and then local news. A man had been arrested for the brutal rape and beating of a local pregnant woman. He was caught in the act. The mugshot flashed up, and my jaw dropped. It was the creep from the mall. He had attacked the woman the day before, the same day we had been to the mall. He attacked her in the parking lot. Number 2 
This story happened a few months ago, shortly after my 20th birthday. I am a male, about 6 foot 2 inches tall, and quite muscular, so I didn't ever think I would be a creepy story like this. I live in a small town in western Germany, and I study near the town of Dusseldorf. In order to get there, I have to go by train. Usually, it is a very boring train ride, and I spend my time reading several different stuff. However, there was this one time which made me really upset and angry with some random creepy guy. It was in early spring. I took the train back home, and it was remarkably empty this particular day. The only person who was at my train compartment was a young girl sitting for herself in a row of seats just opposite of me. She was cute, but I could clearly see that she wasn't older than 16, and likely even younger. Suddenly, I heard footsteps and saw a guy approaching the girl's seat. As soon as he started to speak, I knew that it was the creepy guy that I had seen earlier. He was taller than me, but a bit obese, with short, greasy hair and really dirty clothes, as if he hadn't changed them in days. He also was a bit older than me, probably in his late twenties, which made the following scene even more creepy. So, he approached the girl, asking if she could remove her bag next to her so that he could sit down. I looked at him, quite confused, since there was a whole train compartment full of empty seats. The girl was probably intimidated by his size and silently moved her bag. He sat down and started a conversation with her. It started with, Hello, do you also travel to Ham? We could travel together if you want. She denied with a quick and weak no. He was silent for a few moments before making his next move. Do you come here often? He asked. She shook her head and I was already wondering if I should intervene. The next question the creep asked was, what's your name? My name is Lars. So at least I knew his name now. The girl did not answer, clearly frightened by this guy. When he didn't get his answer, the man started to touch her knee. Hey. I'm asking you a question, he said, with a really creepy tone, as if he would speak to a baby or a pet. I couldn't see his face now, since he was facing the girl, but I am convinced that he had some super creepy in his face while saying this. When she did not give him an answer, he started to touch her thigh. Hey, please answer me, he said. That was when I decided to intervene. I stood up, walked over to the creep, and tried to look as intimidating as possible. Hey asshole, I said, don't you see that she wants to be left alone? What the heck is wrong with you? Lars looked at me, confused and slightly shocked.
Thank mm-hmm. you.